It looks like a bit of party because at parties you get to dance and play music. I think that they're doing a party in Mexico and the Marachis, they have guitars. I agree with Thomas because like they have the guitars hanging up and there's a lot of people dressed in black and white. The man right there in the last one, I think he's sleeping. The girls that are standing out, and I think that, that they're taking time to dance to, to different music. And the one at the last end, I think that she's happy that it's almost her turn. See? Look it. See how the, mm -hmm. um, the stem has hair? Hair. Mm -hmm. And then the leaves. And it was all fuzzy and everything. It looks like the leaves are going crazy. Like. <gasps> Kids start using their eyes to make sense out of the world when they open them as infants. They look around them and they reason. They figure out what's going on with their eyes. Schooling very rarely takes any kind of advantage of that incredible strength that people have. What do you think is happening in this picture? What do you think, Catherine? I think that he was reading the book and writing about it, and then something distracted him that made him look over there. Oh, OK. So you're noticing that this person Kids can, from very early, decode, find meaning in images that they could never understand if it was a text. Are you ready to look? Yes. OK, let's look really carefully. What's happening <laughs> in this picture? Enough? He looks like a vampire. He looks like a vampire. That's what I was going to say. What do you see that makes you say that? Because um, the thing that he's wearing is fat, and um, the clothes that he's wearing is black. OK, so he's got black clothes on. Are you again talking about that collar? OK, what more can we find? I think <coughs> that he's um, like, he looks like evil, because uh, when people smile, they smile like happy. But he's smiling like he did something bad. Wow. Like he did something yeah. bad. He's saying, so there's yeah. not joy coming like through. Like if he's saying, I should, I should have never done that. I agree with Earl. It's because he's forcing that smile. And if somebody was being innocent, he wouldn't have a smile like that. Because I'm comparing him to that statue or the picture of God and everybody. Because they don't, they, they're smile, they're smiling. They're not trying to make it come out. He, him, on the other hand, He's just worried and trembling. I bet you he's even sweating, but you can't see it. We use a teaching approach called VTS, or Visual Thinking Strategies, that was developed by Abigail Hausen, who's a cognitive psychologist based in Cambridge, and Philip Yenowein, who was the director of education at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. The VTS curriculum was designed specifically to meet the needs of beginning viewers, which is to say it's designed to get beginning viewers to look longer and harder, to back up their ideas with evidence from the work of art, to draw inferences from the work of art based on their own personal associations. In short, to make their own meaning from something that at first glance may have seemed completely strange and unfamiliar. I'm not like assuming or I'm not like predicting, but I'm thinking that this was made before like they had put an object in church. Because the um, the, church the people that I've worked with there like, have been so eager to, um, to elicit from the children every little bit of information that they have so the kids really know that what they're saying is valued. And because they know that, they, they continue to just respond more and more. For many, many years, we thought that all you had to do is learn the content in a particular subject and be able to demonstrate that you knew the content. But now it's really about how you apply what you know, how you talk with others about what you know, and how you deal with the unknown with a level of comfort. Because after all, education is knowing what to do when you don't know. So good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Sarah, and I'm here from the Gardner Museum. I'm going to be coming to your classroom a few times over the course of the year, probably about four times. And then you're going to come visit me at the museum probably about four times. And 
what we're going to do together is just talk about what we see. What I would love for you to do is to take a good look at this picture here. Visual thinking strategies involves asking a group to look at a, an image silently for a moment or two, to set the stage for a reflective process, and then to respond to an opening question that's very open-ended, what's going on or what's happening in this picture. Different from what do you see in this picture for theoretical reasons. If you ask them what do you see, you're asking them to do the behavior that's most basic. But if you say what's going on, you're asking them to push beyond that a little bit to the whole idea of making sense out of what they see through a story kind of line. What's going on in this picture? What's happening? Yeah, Giselle? A, a, a mom sitting somewhere and two, two little girls standing behind her. OK, so Giselle's pointing out that we have a figure in the center here. You said is maybe a mom and then two girls standing around her. What do you see that makes you say that might be a mom? Whenever something is open for discussion, a teacher will ask, what do you see that makes you say that? Okay, so you're noticing that they And what more can we find? To keep the whole idea as open-ended and as brainstorming-like as possible. Yeah, what more can we find? The one with the yellow dress is uh, the big, the biggest sister because, the yeah, the oldest because she looks m more mature than the little one. What do you see that makes you say she looks more mature? Because I saw like my little cousin. She always go like this. Okay, so it reminds you of someone, of of somebody younger. That this is kind of a pose you associate with a younger person. Mm -hmm. I think that they're in a cemetery. Because look at, look at their eyes, it looks very sad. Oh, OK. So you're looking at the expression on their faces, and you say that their eyes look kind of sad. Like their father died. That's why they, I mean, like they, that's why they're looking like that. OK, so one possible explanation of why they could be sad is that maybe they're at a funeral at a cemetery or something. Can you tell me more about what you see in the eyes that makes you say they look sad? I can see the shine and the way their mouth is shaping. OK, so is that little shine in their eye, do you mean like maybe they've been crying? Yeah. OK, I just want to make sure I interpreted you correctly. Very beginning viewers, they recognize what they've seen and what they know. If they start to make any sense out of what it is they see, it often is a little idiosyncratic, meaning that what they see might or might not have been intended by the artist. I think it's their birthday, so they're taking a picture. OK, what do you see that makes you say maybe it's somebody's birthday? Because um, the way they dress, because every time you have a birthday, you dress the best you can. OK, so you're talking about maybe they're in their very best clothes for a special occasion like a birthday? Great. The teacher paraphrases everything a student says um, in order to make sure that everybody can hear, to help with language uh, issues, to, in fact, infuse art language if one wants. The most important thing, perhaps, is that it makes everyone in the room feel as if I have made uh, an important contribution. VTS is always taught in the context of a group because it gives kids the chance to hear a lot of different ideas about a work of art. So when you're talking about something, one child may say, well, I think it looks like this for this reason. And another kid will say, well, no, I disagree. I think it looks like this because of this reason. That way, you get a lot of different ideas out on the table. You get this kind of flexible thinking, which builds a, a mind that's open to many possibilities. And the right it looks like if that's the stomach and there's two heads, but the, I know. But the, the other one is like in the stomach. But the head is on the stomach, right? No, no, no. 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 Oh, that, okay. Cause you see that part, that the orange stomach is on the oh, stomach of the black yeah. one. Like I know. They have two heads, and then the orange one is all in his. What you trying to say? Is it attached to each other? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, you can see the orange part and the black one Cause, together. Cause I think Seeing a group of young people standing in front of the St. Michael and the Dragon in the museum's tapestry room and having this intense discussion about what was going on in that picture and what was the structure of the wings of St. Michael and were they wings or were they something else and just burrowing into this picture in a great conversation that involved form and narrative and meaning. And they were oblivious to everything else in the world, but this interaction that they were having with that 
picture and it just shows that works of art have just this amazing capacity to offer up all kinds of learning and so that was a magic moment. Well just make sure you can have a good look at the picture we're going to talk about. What is going on in this picture? Neil? Um, I see, it looks kind of dark, the, the clouds are red, so it looks like sunset is coming. I heard you say that the bottoms of the clouds were red, which makes you feel like maybe it's sunset. Great, what more can we find? I think that, like, like that's a fish, and I think, and, uh, yeah. And that I think, too, that that's kind of like a bull or something. Or an ox. Maybe an ox or a bull over here, and maybe a fish that the baby is riding on over here. Now, what do you see that makes you say that might be an ox or a bull? Um, because sometimes um, oxes are in water, and I don't think that bulls are in water. I don't think. Maybe the bull was trying to run away, and maybe the three women were trying to run to, sh sh to the ocean to get her. Okay, so maybe we have a situation where actually the bull has stolen her away from her friends, and um, it's possible that the friends are trying to help her. Now, what do you see that makes you say maybe the friends are trying to help her? One girl has her hand up. She has her hand up like she's gesturing, come back. Mm -hmm. Maybe those angels that have the bulls in their hands are going to try to shoot the bull to save the girl so she could go back over there. OK, so maybe the angels are, in fact, trying to protect the woman on the bull. And they're, they're working. They have those arrows. Maybe, she's, maybe the reason why the um, bull is still in the water, maybe he's trying to pull him back in the water. OK. So the lady can get him off. So maybe the angels are acting collectively as a force to pull the bull back. I think that that angel on, on the fish is trying to grab the um, bull's tail. Oh, look at that. Try, trying to hold it back from running away. OK, so maybe the angel down here. We talked about how the angels up there are maybe going to do things to reach down. Maybe this angel is getting himself real close so he can grab onto the tail. I don't think like that, um, like the the, um, the angel is trying to get the tail because um, I think because if he cause if he um, grabs the tail maybe um, the bull will keep dragging him through the water. I have a question. Okay. What, what, what is that thing in the corner ne next to the angel on the left? That thing that's sort of that shape that's sort of coming off the body underneath the angel on the left. Yeah. What do you guys think? What is that thing? A wing. A sheep. A, a claw. claw. A wing. I mean, a shape. A you mean that brown thing? A shirt. Yeah. That cloth. A cloth. A cloth. A cloth. That looks like that. That looks like it's here because it's coming from the part of his hair. Speculative thinking, qualified thinking, instead of saying something definitively, it's, it's more likely to say, it might be. And what that builds is a, a mind that's open to possibilities. The visual thinking strategies help children to gather their thoughts, and it makes them sharper observers. It helps them with their language, because they're trying to put into words what their eyes see. And it, of course, helps them to be better writers. And I've always believed good writing helps good reading. The partnership with the gardener teaches children how to look carefully, how to okay. notice details. And that translates into their writing. And I attribute that in a large part to their lessons with the Garden Museum. Like mm -hmm. on the other side, like on that leg, it's just like... People with a bit more experience are more likely to pull back from the narrative. It's not to say that they don't find stories. They can and they will. But in the same way that a child doesn't forget how to crawl, but once they can walk, they don't crawl anymore, then they'll look more to find sort of why it looks like it does. They have a lot of questions. I'm wondering if it's like really gold. If the chairs are really gold? Um, well, I don't think 
they are gold because like it doesn't seem as if they would make like six chairs out of gold and it looks like part of it like I think it's just like gold paint or something because I can see somewhere like where it's kind of chipped but I'm wondering if it is gold. What do you see that makes you say that a person looks like a knight? He's shiny. He's shiny. Okay, so you notice right here that there seems to be like light reflecting and that makes you feel as though this person's a knight? Yeah. Okay. You look like he's in World War One. You're thinking that this is taking place during World War One, you said? It looked like he's not so happy because he, he probably just got out and he probably has to go back in for like another year. Oh, uh, okay, so maybe he just came out of the military and he has to go back. And so that would explain why his face looks serious to you? Um, I have to say that I disagree with um, Josiah because um, in World War I, they would never wear that kind of armor. Okay, all right, so from what you know of War One of the interesting things about critical thinking is you often don't have to do it until you have an experience with something you don't understand. Then being able to begin to wrestle with what does it all mean? What do I think about it? What does somebody that's observing the same thing with me think about it? That's where you get that fundamental connection with critical thinking skills and being a person that understands that there's not always one right answer to every question. Well, if you take each one of these things, observation, drawing conclusions, inferences, arguing in evidence, elaboration, revision, all of those are what teachers consider to be thinking skills. And it's not only important for um, kids to learn these things for, for, the, for art viewing, but they're useful in every other aspect of what work they do in the curriculum. I mean, think how important making observations and drawing conclusions based on evidence is for science or for social studies. John Carlos, do you think that, um, that woman is real? That woman, woman is related to her or him, because they they both have wings, but mm. hers are more darker. Yeah, kind of, and they kind of have like um those things on their head. Oh yeah, those things that angels have, but they're much whiter. Where did the arms go? There's a lot of talk about critical thinking skills in K-12 education these days. But let's face it, most public schools are focused on helping kids get the right answer on a standardized test. In art, it's a different story. Works of art are by definition full of many different kinds of meaning. And by asking kids to decode a work of art, we're giving them an authentic task. So when you're talking about what's going on in this picture, they know that we really want to know what it is that they think. Hey, do you think he come in, came in from a window? Mm -hmm. Because there, there might be a door behind him, because you can see at the bottom of, a, of the cave next to that um, creature. Can I just say something? No, because that, I think those creatures are kind of like together. You think it's two, two monsters fused together? No. I don't know. I kind of think it is. It is. So, so it has kind of like... Where's the other body? In the right. It looks like if that's the stomach and there's two heads, but the, I know. But the other one is like in the stomach. Oh, oh no, it looks like, like, it looks like okay. there's two faces. Listening to kids talk about art is a wonderful insight into the way they learn. And what better way to learn than thinking through art? And then there's an art. Yeah, there's I know, but they're together. Body, cause they're it looks like they're body. separated. Right? right? And there's a black body oh, no, grabbing now the I statue. See it. Now we see a you black see? body stabbing the, no. grabbing but the statue. You know, like, don't the you black see? Body no, no, no. Don't you see? Don't copy.